I feel like I can breathe now. I feel like I'm not carrying this huge burden and this like backpack of trauma. It's just like I can let this secret out and have everybody know. And that's kind of what I wanted with this. I just want everybody to know because obviously, you know, on social media too, it's the number one question I get asked every single day. It's when are you going to get pregnant? Why aren't you pregnant? Why aren't you having more babies? You know, don't you want that for shy? There's a lot of that, you know, and there was one comment in particular, like, how could you not, you know? And the how could you not threw me off a ledge. I was like, if only you knew what was actually going on with my family, you would never say that. It was 2020, mid-pandemic, and I had just begun um, my season on Dancing with the Stars with Vernon Davis. And that was when I first got pregnant. And it was the first time we tried, which was the same as Shy. So we were over the moon, overjoyed, because it was easy. We didn't, it was one time, you know? And I, I found out when I was three weeks in, two weeks after that, I had my first miscarriage. I was actually uh, taking our car, our GMC, in for a service. And I walked across the road to the Whole Foods to get a little snack. And it just all started happening. And, you know, it was like a perfect storm of events. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. Both my doctors weren't picking up, the nurses wouldn't pick up. I was leaving voicemails. I was petrified because I didn't know what this was. And you know, a lot of friends of mine have even had a menstrual cycle whilst being pregnant. And the, you know, the pregnancy has been completely normal and fine. So I was trying to tell myself that every moment, every step of the way, I was like, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. People go through this all the time. And of course, you know, deep down inside of me, I knew what was happening. So it was during the Dancing with the Stars season and um, no one knew. And I went back to work, I think two days after it happened. So it was hard circumstantially because I didn't even know what to say or how to say that and bring that up to production. I was completely embarrassed, ultimately ashamed. Um, I didn't even know how to utter the words and have that sentence come out of my mouth. I had a miscarriage. I didn't know how to tell anybody. I'd only told about six people, including our parents, maybe eight people. So it was a real task for me to even try to think about how I was going to go to each one of those people and say, hey, please don't ask anymore because it's not there anymore. Like I didn't even know how to have that conversation. So it took me weeks. So people would still come up and say, you know, the people who knew, congrats, you know, like, how's it going? And I would say, yeah, I'm feeling fine, you know. But ultimately I just couldn't believe this happened to me. Somebody who prides herself on health, wellness, you know, I've been an athlete pretty much all my life. I exercise every single day but as I came to realize, it doesn't go hand in hand with a reproductive system. So um, it took me around eight months, I think, to get pregnant again. And every single one of those months, I was trying to get pregnant. It was like a thing, you know, it became something that I must do, you know. This one didn't work, but the next one will type of thing. And you know, I'm a very strong person, strong-willed when it comes to the things that I want and the things that I know I want and I, just was very reluctant to take the time off. You know, they say, take a couple months off, you know. And it was, it was hard also because I feel like I knew from the very, very beginning that there was an issue. Something wasn't right. And everybody around me was telling me, Peter, don't worry, you're just stressed. And so we had a job again two days after it happened. Um, I was meant to be flying to New York to do a wedding. We had, we were the entertainment at a wedding. So we were booked for that show and I was gonna fly to New York, tell him in a cute way, give him a card, say, hey, we're pregnant, you know, make it a bit of a thing. And so instead of that, I had to call him from LA. He was already over there and say, it's happened again and he was in a car full of people. So he had to pull the car over and of course, everybody was wondering what's wrong and he had to go off and have a conversation with me. 
Um, and he was, this was the first time that I heard him get really upset, which was um, even hard to, you know, hear him get so upset because I know it affects him too, you know? And, you know, this one, I really said to myself, I said, Peter, you know, you have, because I had experienced the first, I knew what to look for, I knew the signs. And I had, um, you know, a little bit of insight the night before it happened. So I said, Peter, if it happens, literally told myself, you have 24 hours to get over this because then you've got to get on a plane and go to work. So I gave myself 24 hours to cry it out, do whatever I needed to do. And then I got on the plane and went and did this show. Again, doesn't get really any easier, but because I had the work there, I think that it took my mind off it. I had my friends around me. Again, nobody knew anything. I would never tell a soul and I would just kind of get through it and, and deal with it. But it definitely hits Max as well, you know, straight in the face. That one was like an, oh my God, it happened again. And I think that's when Max was like, oh boy, maybe there is, you know, something else going on here. So <laughs> I flew to Ukraine to be with Max because he had been away on tour. He had been in Ukraine. It had been months and I wasn't able to really give it a good try, you know, and get pregnant again. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to fly to you in Ukraine. You know, I'm ovulating soon, so let's make it happen. Let's do it. And of course, my timing, I got COVID. So it was really hard. I flew back from Ukraine. I felt horrible, um, but I tested still negative to get on the plane. And as soon as I got back here, it just all went downhill. Like it was almost like I had a cold and I, I felt yuck in Ukraine. But when I got here back in LA, it just went so far down that I couldn't, I had no strength. I couldn't open a dishwasher. I couldn't open the fridge to feed Shy to get him some toast to put in the toaster. Like I couldn't do anything. So that's when I called Max and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know who to call because nobody can come in here. So what do I do? And um, so I, I had no other choice but to call an ambulance. We had gotten pregnant in Ukraine and I flew back pregnant, didn't know it, had no idea. I went into the hospital, they came back and the doctor's face just dropped because I had so much blood taken and so much, so many, so many tests done because I was really, really sick. And the doctor came back in and I thought he was going to reveal some really bad news for me. And his face dropped and I said, what's wrong? What happened? And, and he said, did you know that you were pregnant? And I had Max's, because I had both drips in my arms, and I had Max here on speaker on my chest. And when he heard that, he heard the doctor say, you're pregnant. And he started like, sort of, no, because like very happy. They he was said, like, wow, they, babe, we're pregnant. Like, first, the first they said that, that you're pregnant. And I was like, well, you know, this whole COVID craziness, the way she got taken to a hospital, and I'm in Ukraine on the phone while we have nobody to look at shy. And it was like, it was a very difficult situation. So I immediately thought, right, I just had another one, deal with it, get over it and, you know, and let's move on. Um, let's just get out of hospital. I would have loved to have had him here for any one of them to happen because, yeah, I felt alone. I felt like I didn't have that immediate support when I needed it. Of course, he was on the phone. I know I'm already crying. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think they were all just, if he was here, of course, it would have been a little bit easier, you know, um, but of course he's working, you know, he's doing his thing and I can't ever blame him for that. Of course he was, you know, came straight home every time for me. The one thing I knew is that she's going through a very traumatic experience, you know, not once, not twice, three, however many times, it's traumatic. And um, there were moments when I, I really didn't like that we're the people that we are with the jobs that we have and 
you know, this like get up on the plane and leave. I wish I had a nine to five, ninety percent of my life, you know, and then go away yeah. on vacations together. That would have been nice. <laughs> but then again, you know, look how blessed we are, you know. So we can't, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. You got to be so strong and so strong as a couple and so strong as a people. I think I can surmise in my in my head this entire experience as very telling and revealing of who we are as a couple, who you are as a couple in general, the people that go through these things. Mm -hmm. If you're really truly in love and you want the best for each other and you've seen this to be the family and you'll stick together, you'll stick it out, you'll figure it out. I'm learning a lot about things I didn't think I was going to I was going to learn about at this this age. I thought that I knew how body works. I pride myself on some, you know, little tidbits, medical know-how or something, just due to the nature of our profession, just being able to rehab the body. And so like, maybe I dabble a little more than some, but I never thought that, you know, two healthy athletic people are going to be in a, in, a, in a predicament like this. And so for me, you know, it's a lot to try to process because number one, I'm not that personality. I always try to fix things. And um, I realize that it's not me or mine to fix. I just need to be supportive of someone else's process. And so that's how I look at it. And I try to do my best in just supporting Peter and her journey in, in, in figuring herself out, because that's what this is, you know? I'm a changed man because of this experience, because I don't think it's about me. And I appreciate everyone saying that it's also about you and how you feel and all that. It's not, it's about me supporting her. When this is all done and we're happy and healthy, you know, there'll be moments when she needs to support me. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the receiving end of the same amount of love. I said to myself, after the second miscarriage, I said, if there's one more, that's it. I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing it to me. I'm not doing it to them. I, I, I don't want to go through this again because it's so mentally taxing and just all round traumatic. And I mean, three, I think I kind of had my answer that that was my limit. I haven't had depression. Um, I think I would just call it some bad days. So just um, wondering when, why me? Why can't I have another child when it was so easy in the past? You know, all of these questions just really bothered me and that's what brought me to actually finally go see a, a specialist um, in their field to do the necessary work to find out exactly what is going on here. They can never say this is 100% the issue, but they do believe that I have PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, which was a shock to me. I don't have any cysts on my ovaries at all but I do have hormonal imbalances that are causing the eggs to maybe not mature enough, you know, before they're released. There was concrete evidence in my blood work that something was off and something wasn't right. And for me, that was all and everything that I needed to hear. I walked out of there with a piece of paper. I was happy as Larry, you know, and I know that sounds weird, like they there was something wrong with you, but it was almost like, no, I have answers. Like I have everything I need to move forward and make some really big decisions now for my family. You know, am I gonna keep trying naturally or am I gonna go straight to IVF? And you know, I chose the latter. Through the conversations with my IVF doctor, you know, I definitely could have pushed on and kept trying for the next couple of years to have a healthy, natural pregnancy. And chances are, I might've got that because you know my egg count is good and there's a lot of things that are fine but ultimately I knew within myself that I wasn't going to be happy waiting another couple years and you know what if that didn't work then I've wasted two years of trying to make it work again when ultimately I know that there's something wrong so right now I'm on medication I'm doing all the injections and uh, we're keeping track of my follicles and so far so good so far it looks really, really promising. I honestly, I feel like I'm in such a better place just because 
I don't honestly feel like I have anxiety right now because I feel like I have answers. Before was all the anxiety and the stress and the, oh my God, how am I gonna make this work? And now I just, I don't have any other words but hope and positivity and just crossing my fingers and everything that this is gonna work. I don't usually get affected by social media stuff, but I feel like it kind of hit a point with me that I was like, okay. And even Max said to me, well, babe, probably people know something's up because we've been talking about having more kids for years now and we're not pregnant. So he's like, maybe it won't be a shock to people, but I don't think it will be a shock to people at all. I think people will probably be expecting this, but I feel like me allowing myself to tell my story to even help one individual who may be feeling a little ashamed, a little embarrassed about their situation. I feel like this has kind of done its job, you know?